no matter what target Babylon tries to put on our back, our black girl magic just continues to be so undeniable. Like, if, if as a woman we can go through childbirth, we can go through anything. As black women, I think we should just encourage each other. That's what you're trying to put on to us. That's how you're trying to keep us down. So there's an inherent desire to just rise. Welcome to Informal, a new show brought to you by Beats by Dr. Dre, which will see me, Dottie, joined by some of the best talent in and around Black British culture, discussing important matters that affect us and the wider community. On today's episode, I'm joined by the Queen of the South rapper Shabo, model and charity organiser Eva Apio, and racial justice campaigner Temi Mwale. Thank you all so much for joining me. Thanks for having us. Now, in the last few years, we've seen seismic shifts in culture and society with movements such as Hashtag Me Too, Black Lives Matter, and even Oscar So White gaining traction online. Now, all of these movements were started by black women, and you'd have to have been living under a rock not to have heard about them. But have you heard of Tarana Burke, April Rain, Alicia Garza, Patrice Cullors, or Opal Tometi? Well, these are the black women that started the aforementioned movements, and they're not exactly household names. So I'd love to talk to you guys today about what you think it is about the black female experience that lends itself to speaking out on social justice. What do you think it is about, about your experience as a black woman that makes you want to speak about these things? As a black woman, especially at a young age, I feel like because growing up, I didn't really see much of people speaking up for especially young black girls or like children in general. Females were, were natural born leaders, like we're natural born nurturers and carers. So we have that in us already to want to make change or want to change something in general. So I think that's where that came from for me. Historically, we've always been active. That's the first thing to say. And I think the reason is partly because we're experiencing multi-layered oppression. So not just experiencing, for example, racism, but also experiencing sexism, gendered oppression and racial oppression as well. So we have a unique experience and I think that's where the fight comes from. Sheba, what are your thoughts on, on what it is about the black female experience that makes so many of us feel compelled to speak out about social injustice? I just think we've seen our family being put through a lot, especially as women. I think, I kind of think it's great that we have social media as well because it brings more awareness and it just shows, you know, other people what black women go through. Do you feel kind of a duty to be a role model beyond social justice, just in general? I think anybody who has a fan base, especially because I have a fan base with a lot of black women, naturally it's my responsibility to carry myself in a way and but still be myself at the same time. But that's why I did the Dobale video where I was showing me getting my cane rolls done and just my natural hair and, you know, my Nigerian culture because I really want to be myself and show people that, you know, a Nigerian rapper can also be in the music industry and be speaking her cultural language. At the same time, show people that black is beautiful. Your natural hair is great, even though I'm wearing weave right now. <laughs> but your natural hair is great. Do you, do you feel black women are given enough credit for their roles in doing forward thinking things? Historically, I would say no. Over the last decade or two, I think that position is changing. And I do think that we don't need a movement that has one leader. Do you know what I'm trying to say? We don't need that. We need many organisations. We need many people on the ground building. And I think naturally that's seen as a different type of leadership. And I think in that kind of shift, women and black women in particular will be able to get their dues um, for the work that is being put in <laughs> to sustaining these movements, not just being at the forefront of them, but at the same time, kind of what Eva was saying, the nurturing, the caring, the compassion that is also underneath it. And really the desire for a world where we can thrive and um, not just survive and where there's joy within that. I feel like we bring that spirit, that fight, we bring it with joy and love and care. And that's something that should also be applauded. And of course, you, you set up a charity you, yeah. you, you do things in the real world. Can you tell us a bit more about, about the charity? Of course, Uganda's a very sp uh, special place to you. Um, so I was born in Uganda. My mum used to come from the UK and she used to like organise like a charity event where she bathes all the street kids, feeds them, clothes them. And I went to see that with her when I was like five. So I thought when I moved over here and God gave me what I have now, I thought, why can I not give that back, you know? give something to the kids back there, give them an opportunity. So 
I sat down with my dad and I thought, um, how can I do this? So we thought building a youth centre. So with Eva Appear Foundation, I'm trying to build a youth centre where not necessarily if you're a street kid, but if your parents are fighting at home or you don't have anywhere to sleep tonight or um, you just want to be around your friends, just somewhere that's open 24-7, basically. Love that. Incredible work. We continue to be trailblazers in popular in popular 100%. culture, in fashion, you Period. know, in the arts, in entertainment, in science, in politics, music, sport, you name it. Why do you think that no matter what, no matter what target Babylon tries to put on our back, no matter what <laughs> weights are put on our shoulders, why do you think that no matter what, our black girl magic just continues to be so undeniable? Because we're amazing. Because we're lit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we're amazing. It's just that power. Like if if as a woman we can go through childbirth, we can go through anything. Being at society, being seen in society as at the bottom in in so many markers, like we don't accept that for ourselves. That's what you're trying to put onto us. That's how you're trying to keep us down. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So there's an inherent desire to just rise and we've been that's historical, intergenerational. It's in the blood, it's in the DNA. Uh, a perfect sentiment to end on. And I love what you said, an inherent desire to just rise. Like, if, if that alone is the takeaway from this, um, I hope it resonates. Guys, thank you so much for your inherent desire to continue rising, continue shining brightly. Uh, and it was, it was a pleasure to be joined by you on Informal today. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Mm.